Good day, students. Pastor Fisher here. Glad to be with you again for chapel, and I'm looking forward to getting to see some of you uh, this week, at the end of the week, during the Project Fair. Looking forward to that opportunity. I'm always blessed by the efforts you put into your projects, and uh, it's always encouraging to see the quality of your work. So looking forward to that this weekend, or rather this Friday. Today I want to talk some more about the uh, changelessness of uh, our God, the changelessness of his character. Um, but before we do that, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we ask you to bless us in our chapel time today. Lord, uh, we are separated in ways that uh, we're not used to, but we're thankful, Lord, that you uh, are with us wherever we are, and that even now you're looking down upon each of the classrooms, and uh, Lord, looking down upon the students as they set their hearts to consider your word today. And I pray, Lord, that you'll bless them as they do so. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. A few years ago, Mrs. Fisher and I uh, were driving on the beach in Oregon, and it was a beautiful day, and the sun was out, and but there were these patches of fog that came rolling in along well, along the beach. As if you've driven on the beach there, you know that uh, that can happen. And we were gliding along, watching the birds uh, chase the ocean in and out, gobbling up little creatures, whatever they could find there to eat along the beach when out of one of these foggy patches um, loomed the skeleton of what was once a, a fairly large ship. Some of the keel, um, that's the middle piece that goes from the bow or the front of the boat to the end of the boat, and uh, that uh, uh, goes from the bow to the stern. Um, some of that keel was uh, was still there. It was some of it was buried in the sand, but the two ends were sticking up out of the sand, uh, still looking kind of solid and tall. Uh, many of the ribs were still intact too. The ribs are the the cross pieces that come up uh, along the keel to hold the pieces of hull along the edge of, of the ship, and. Uh, these arched up out of the sand, and um, the whole thing looked like the bones of some great whale or a dinosaur sticking up out of the sand in the beach there. And as we pulled up next to it, uh, this frame on which the rest of the ship was once built was now just a relic. But it didn't look much different from the day many years before when the ship was first being put together, because the first thing they would have laid was the keel, and then having laid the keel, they would begin to put the ribs on that ship. There was a time in the life of this boat, long ago, when it would have been sitting in the shipyard, um, a long, strong keel with its ribs attached, waiting for the plates to be welded or, or fixed to the hull, and the decks to be inserted on various levels of the ship, and then the superstructure to be built on the main deck. And when it was new and a strong frame just waiting to be filled out and to be put to sea, it wouldn't have looked much different from a distance than it did that day on the beach when Mrs. Fisher and I came upon it. It was new and it was strong there then, but now, as we got closer to it, we could see that it was frail, um, it was buried in the sand, and it was rusting away to nothing. It was brittle and fragile. How much this structure had changed over the decades. It went from being a skeleton, uh, a brand new skeleton, a strong skeleton on which a ship could be built, to being a ship that sailed the seas, to finally being wrecked off the shores of Oregon, and then becoming once again just that skeleton. And now even the skeleton itself was beginning to disappear and decay. It changed so much over those decades. And people are the same. We begin new and strong, and then we change quite dramatically with time. But God, students, he never changes. 
Um, one of the most frequently quoted verses about the unchanging nature of your God is spoken of in relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you find that verse in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, when we look at any part of God's Word, we need to take into account or think about where it is in the Bible and what surrounds it. And we call that the context. In this case, these words are found in the middle of a bunch of what we call exhortations. And an exhortation, children, is just uh, a call for someone, an urging of them to do something. So your teacher might say to you, button your coat, it's cold out there. And uh, they're urging you to button up your coat and, and keep warm. They might say, stop talking and listen to me. And they're urging you to stop chattering there among yourselves at your desks and to start listening to what he or she has to say. Or they might say, pay attention, this is important. And they're calling on you, they're urging, on you, urging you to, to fix your mind and your eyes and your heart and, and, and your whole attention on them because what they're about to say or to teach you is so important. In each of those examples, they're urging you to do at least one, if not two, things. Um, urging you in the one instance to be quiet and to listen. That's two things that they're urging you to do. So now, when we see these words here about Jesus surrounded by exhortation, we realize that it too is an exhortation. Or it's the Word of God urging you and me to do something. And it seems funny the way it's worded because it just says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we first hear that, it might not sound like an exhortation, an urging to do something. But in this case, it's actually in the context of this passage where it's found. It's urging us to remember, to believe, and to look on Jesus Christ as being the same today as he was yesterday and as he will be forever. So first the Bible says, remember, Jesus Christ is always the same. He is the same to you as he has ever been to Christians. He is always himself. You and I, we're always changing. And the longer we know someone, the more changes we see in them. I knew some of you uh, before you even entered Heritage. And you were pretty little and pretty young. And now some of you are quite grown up. And I've seen that change take place in you over the years. A wise man, well, wise man once said that if people's faces changed, changed as often as their opinions, we would never be able to recognize one another. Um, and that's probably very true. But with Jesus, we may become wiser and the Holy Spirit may reveal more of Christ's love and of his mercy towards us and his goodness, but it is not Jesus who's changing. We're the ones who are changing. We're learning more. We're coming to appreciate more who he is and what he is. And it isn't that he's changing in who he is as, as God, but our understanding of who he is as God is changing. The way we think about it and, and the way we understand it is changing. He is one with God the Father, with whom the Bible says there is no variation nor shadow of turning. What he says, therefore, because he never changes, remains always true. 
and what he promises students, he continues to provide. In John chapter 6 and verses 35 and 37, John chapter 6 verses 35 and 37, Jesus says this, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Now that's the promise of Jesus, that he's the bread of life, and that those who feed on him will never hunger and thirst again, and that if anyone comes to him, he will not cast that person out, whoever it is. So when boys and girls who are called by him hundreds of years ago came to Jesus looking for salvation, they were not turned away. But they found him to be their savior, the bread of life, and never hungered or thirsted again. It's the same promise he makes to you and to me and to all the students who will ever follow you at heritage and forever until the end of the age. No one who has ever eaten of him as the bread of life that has put their faith in Jesus Christ and his work of dying for their sins on the cross of Calvary has ever been less than satisfied with what he, provi what he has provided by grace. And at the same time, those same students have never been turned away. Your teachers and I, we don't even hesitate for a second to point you to Jesus for salvation and for blessing in your lives. Not even for a second do we hesitate to do that. We know that what Jesus has been to us, he will also be to you. We know it. And so that's why we, we don't hesitate. When I was a boy, adults pointed me to Jesus and said, look to him, look to Jesus, and you'll find Jesus to be everything you need for salvation. You'll find him to be everything you need for life. You'll find him to be everything you need for eternity. And I did that, and they were right. I found him to be everything they said he would be. Now I'm old, and I can tell you without any doubt that Jesus has been all that and more to me. And I know he'll be the same to you. He's been that way every day of my life. And I can exhort you, urge you, to trust him too. I can do it because I know he never changes. We urge you to call on him as your Savior. And while he continues to be the only Savior, he also continues to be the gracious and loving Savior of all who come to him and believe. And we know that to be true. He is your best teacher. Uh, you can learn so much from him. And he has promised that he would teach you by his word through the Holy Spirit. And he does that for believers every day. Every day he does that for those who are his. In Psalm 25 and verse 8 we read, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. You've not only come to him as your Savior, if you believe in him as your Redeemer. You've not only come to him for feeding and instruction as your teacher. But if you know Christ, you've also come to him as your King. And so he ought to remain in your heart and in my heart. And uh, in our thoughts, because he will never give up a heart that he has conquered. And he will always be the king of your life. The exhortation here, students, the thing that you and I are called to do 
is to trust Jesus as he has always been trusted by those who know him. Some of you started just trusting Jesus when you were very young, and now you're getting older. The Bible says keep on trusting him, just like you always have. You've changed. Things around you have changed, and they are changing, and they'll continue to do so, students. But you can trust him just like you did from the very beginning, because while everything else is changing, he has not changed. He's still the good shepherd who will lead you into green pastures and beside still waters. In fact, it's because he doesn't change that you and I can say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Sometimes, you know, people will come to the church, as uh, I wind this down today, with a gift that they want us to give to a friend of theirs anonymously. And that means without the person who's getting the gift knowing who it is that gave it to them. So they're sort of asking us to be a go-between. They give us the money, we distribute it, but we don't tell the person that we're giving it to where it came from. And there's a true story about a man who wanted to give his friend a great deal of money. And he asked the pastor to do it for him. And the pastor took the money, but he decided that it would be better to send the money to the man who needed it, not in one big pile of money, but slowly, and not painfully slowly. He wasn't withholding anything from him. He just was giving it to him a piece at a time. So he took some of the money, and he enclosed it in an envelope with this message, more to come. Every few days, he sent one of those envelopes in the mail to the man who was receiving the gift with the same message, more to come, more to come, more to come. Now, you can imagine what that poor man felt when every few days he received one of those letters with that promise, more to come. Week after week, the letters came with the same message. Nothing changed because there was enough money on hand to keep those letters coming for months. And so every few days, a letter would come with some amount of money in it. And, and the promise, the only promise being, more to come. The great preacher Charles Spurgeon, in telling this story, added this. Every blessing that comes from God is sent with the same message. More to follow. More to come. I forgive you your sins, Jesus says, but there's more to come. I justify you in the righteousness of Christ, God says, but there's more to come. I adopt you into my family, but there's more to come. I educate you for heaven, but there's more to come. I give you grace upon grace, but there's more to come. I have helped you even to old age, but there's still more to come. I will uphold you in the hour of death, and even then there shall be more to come. And why? Why can that promise be made? Well, simply because of this truth, students. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to think about this, about you as our living God uh, this day. Your changelessness, Lord, in this changing world. And Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. And we pray that all through our lives, we may see you clearly as our Savior, as our teacher, and as our King. And Lord, we'll always remember that the things that you have promised to us that we put our trust in, even when we were little, those things we can still trust you for, even when we're older. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins we have through the Lord Jesus Christ, a forgiveness that covers all our sins. 
and for the gracious and precious relationship we have with our Redeemer. And we thank you, Lord, that our Savior is the same. He is the same right now as he has ever been, and he will ever be so for us. Thank you, Lord, for your unchanging faithfulness and love for us. Bless these students, Lord. Keep them well. Encourage them in their work uh, for uh, at school and encourage them in their labors for you and the gospel. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next time at the next chapel. Bye.